answer a question I've been getting quite a lot actually since my chat in February at the NEC. I mentioned during that that the very first motorhome we ever bought was totally wrong for us in pretty much every way and that our second van was much better suited and I've had several emails and Facebook messages from people who are trying to find their ideal perfect van, motorhome, RV, whatever you want to call it and they're hoping to learn from our mistakes and avoid making them themselves, which I get because it's an expensive error. So what I thought I'd do today is run through a bit about our thought process, why it was wrong for us and how we learned from that whole experience. I have written a buyer's guide and a blog post up on how to help choose your perfect van, but this is gonna be a little bit more in depth on why the first one was wrong for us. Now, sadly, when we had our first van, didn't have a YouTube channel and didn't have a blog and had no intention of sharing anything with anybody. So there were very few photos of our first van. Loads of the outside in amazing places, but very few photos of the inside. And there's certainly not any like nice, pretty tour video or anything like that because we weren't doing that. So I will try very hard and dig out some photos, but we are in France and I'm fairly certain the hard drive with all of that stuff from the past is in the UK. So let us start at the very beginning. Why did we get a motorhome in the first place? And if you're looking to buy a van, this is where I suggest you start. Seriously, shut down all your, your windows and your laptops and things. Although don't shut this one down because I'd stop talking. It might be a good thing. Um, but shut down all like your windows of vans for sale and best motorhomes and all that stuff. And ask yourself why you want a motorhome or a camper van or a caravan or anything like that what do you want to do with it for us it was a vehicle that we could use to drive long distances and tow our motorbikes behind us because trying to find somewhere that was motorbike friendly was getting difficult and trying to find somewhere that we could stay in with our daughter who was getting older we would need two rooms and it was getting more expensive so we were looking at ways of cutting down the cost of traveling long distances by long distance i'm talking within europe not miles and across like America or anything. So that was our primary reason for getting a motorhome in the first place. And as I said in the NEC speech, if you've watched that or even if you were there, I always wanted a cute little camper van, whether it was a VW or something like that. Just something that looked cute and fun and just pretty. The problem we've got, as my husband pointed out to me, is that we were sharing this space with our teenage daughter and our teenage daughter's taste in music, which I think was the comment I made in the NEC. And we soon realised that three near adults were not going to fit into a VW camper van. I know some people do. I'm not saying they can't. I'm saying that the level of comfort that we wanted and the space that we needed you don't find in a camper van they're great with smaller kids if you are happy being in a small space awesome for that but for us we wanted a space that jade could have for her own so she needed like her own bunk or her own little space or her own overcab bed which is what we eventually chose for her we wanted our own little bedroom thing and i definitely definitely wanted a fixed bed because i didn't want to make up a bed every day and uh, my husband needed somewhere that he could work from so we wanted something with a dinette area so he could use that as his office space 
and we literally we had a budget and I definitely recommend set a budget a sensible budget so that you've got a little bit of wiggle room to fix anything that might be broken or to replace anything you don't like or anything like that so leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room and stick to that budget it's so easy to go to a motorhome show or go to a dealership and they'll just chalk you up but just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit and then you'll find yourself with a van that's beautiful but it's way over your price limit and that's how you can get yourself into all sorts of trouble so set a budget and don't break that budget if you have to save up a bit longer then save up a bit longer so we did that and we literally bought the first van that fit our three criteria that had a fixed bed that had an overcab bed and that had a dinette and she was awesome that was a little ship and we went on some brilliant adventures with her we went and did wales we did our first time wild camping we went to scotland and oh we did stonehenge that incredible morning at stonehenge which i go on about far too often but it was just magical but we realized very quickly having spent i think after like three or four days in her we were like yeah we're gonna have to change this van at some point quite soon because Jade couldn't sit up in her overcab bed so when we had this vision of that being her little space and she could have all her stuff out and do her drawing or listen to music or whatever she hated it it was like being in a tomb and because it was an older style van she I mean she's only Diddy bless her but yeah she had no space and it she had to sort of roll in and roll out and we couldn't ever have slept up there so I understand how she didn't really want to be in there so she spent most of her time in our bed or on our bed during the day if we were camped up somewhere my husband had the dinette for his little office thing because the deal was always been that he works from the road I mean obviously he has the odd week off here and there but normally he's working as we're traveling that's the how we pay for all this so if she's on our bed and he's in the dinette area I literally had nowhere to sit <laughs> and I was like hi so i'm either sharing the bed with her which when she's got all her drawing stuff out and is listening to whatever she's listening to at the time um yeah it wasn't the most comfortable solution or i was sitting in the cab and it was just yeah it wasn't it wasn't practical so it didn't work for us we needed more seating spaces rather than sort of bed spaces the other thing with the problem with the dinette is that it's the only place you've got to sit now it's fine for eating, but if it's raining for several days, I'm looking at you, Isle of Skye, you can't go out. I mean, I know there are crazy people who go do hiking and walking and things in the rain and the wet, and that's fine. If that's you, amazing. I am very envious of your ability to disregard the weather, but I'm not that brave or that hardened, obviously, being a Southern softy. So we literally only had the dinette to sit at when it was throwing it down and i think it was like three days and we were just like this we need more space we're driving each other crazy just spread out more which is hilarious because we've lived on boats for 14 years the three of us have lived on boats for five years so we're used to living in small spaces i mean yes our boats grew in size as we sort of did them up and sold them on but we are used to not having as much stuff and, and learning to sort of work around each other. And these are skills that you definitely need when you're living in a van or a motorhome. But there's such a thing as too small and not thinking about the spaces that you need in your van enough. So I would think about, we're going back to the point now, have you noticed? We've gone back on our tangent. Um, I would definitely think about what you want to get out of the van. What's your point of it? If you want it as a base where you can go to a campsite somewhere in the summer, the kids can have a pool and it's literally just somewhere to sleep, then make sure you have comfortable sleeping areas. If you want it as a place where you can long term travel, make sure you have enough seatbelt. It was terrifying how many vans only have two seatbelts in the front and they don't have proper seatbelts in the back. So if you're traveling with friends or with kids or with, you know, you're planning on taking family members, make sure you've got enough seatbelts. The other thing to take into account is um, your weight. Can you, not your weight as such, the weight of the van, before I go down a very dark rabbit hole, let's not go down there. But the weight of the van, can you drive the van? I can't drive this new van we've got because it's over three and a half tonnes and I took my licence after the 1st of January 97. Don't quote me on that date, but I think it's 1st January 97. If you took your driving licence after that date, you don't automatically get the right to drive something over three and a half tonnes. So you have to do your C1 licence, which I'm working on, but I'm not working on it particularly fast. I do really need to get that done and signed. But 
that is a definite consideration. We bought the second van as an ex-hire vehicle from a rental company and they had several of these on their books and they said they were really struggling trying to rent these out because people who were, were older generally didn't need such a big van because the kids had grown up and left home or whatever so they wanted a smaller van for a couple and people who had kids couldn't drive a van over three and a half tons because they didn't have the appropriate license. So that's definitely something to bear in mind when you are picking your van. Another thing to think about is where you're going to be driving it most. Now, this isn't that essential because we drive most of the time in Europe, but we actually have a UK sided van. Now, I didn't realise there was a UK side and a Europe side till we started buying motorhomes, but there are. So on a UK side, obviously, the driving wheel is on the right and the Europe is on the left, but it's actually the hab doors, the doors that go into the main hab area in the UK, the hab door is on the left hand side because as you pull into the curb, it's by the curb. Whereas in Europe, obviously you drive on the right. So the hab door is on the right hand side of the van. And now I'm thinking I'm saying that, did I say that right? I've got myself, yeah. So in the UK, the hab doors are on the left. And in Europe, the hab doors are normally on the right. So that when you're driving on the right, you pull into the curb on the right and you get out without having to get out into the road. It's a safety thing. And that's something definitely to think about if you have small kids or if you have pets. We've had to be really careful with Mac on several occasions because obviously we're in Europe. When we open our hab door, it's into traffic. So we have to make sure we've got a really good hold on him or he's secure before we open that door. These are just things to think about. That is definitely not a deal breaker at all. Although weirdly, our first motorhome had a door on the European side, so it was on the right hand side. And when we parked up at a couple of campsites, because we used campsites a lot more that first thing, because we didn't really know how to wild camp. Some campsites are very, 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 very strict on how you park in your little pitch area. And they even go as far as to put little white posts and a certain corner of your van has to be by a little white post. Woe betide you if you're two inches over. But obviously when we parked our motorhome up in accordance with their rules, our door was on the wrong side. So it was right next to one of the other vans. And we did this at one site. I won't go into which one, but we actually turned our van round so that the door opened out into the, the space, the pitch, so that we could have our awning out and everything else. And they came across and made us turn around. We were like, well, we can't put our awning out or anything. And they're like, well, that's just the way it is. You have to reverse into your pitch. And we were like, that's ridiculous. Funnily enough, we didn't stay there longer than one night. But that's something definitely to be aware of. Sometime in airs, they're the same, because often in an air in Europe, you'll have sort of the parking place, which is in the next to it, you'll have sort of a square for your awning or table or whatever you want to put out and I know in Germany we definitely had that because that's where we could put all our bikes and stuff it was great but you have to be careful which way you position the motor and whether you back in or whether you go in nose first these are all just things to think about when you are looking to buy a motorhome I tell you what it's terrifying I didn't realize how much more expensive motorhomes were in certainly in France than they are in the UK and what you can get in the UK based on what you can get in France for the same amount of money. It's crazy how expensive they are in France. Um, and they hold their money as well. Secondhand vans in France are crackersly expensive. So if you are debating buying a European vehicle, be very aware of the fact that if you certainly if you buy it from Europe you're going to get probably less for your money this is obviously a very sweeping generalization and of course you can get deals somewhere um, but generally you get a lot less for your money in France than you do if you buy it in the UK and if you are in the UK and you're looking to import be aware of the taxes the malice tax and various other taxes that you have to pay for importing a vehicle and take that into account when you are budgeting We've gone off on a very random tangent there, but never mind. Let's bring it back to things to think about when you're buying your motorhome. Okay, um, I think we were talking about weight. We were talking about weight. So if you get a van under three and a half tonnes, which in an ideal world, we will probably at some point change our van for under three and a half tonnes, but I'll leave that for a whole other post. You have to be careful for how much weight you are going to put into it. 
especially if your plate is really close to the three and a half tonne limit because when you think about fuel and you think about water and obviously how much it weighs will depend on the size of the tanks you've got on board and then you put in some gas canisters when they're full and or you know if you have a fillable system and then you put in tins or you put in pots and pans or clothes even all of those things they really add up and you can easily go over three and a half tons and i have seen people throughout europe who have obviously been pulled over by the police they've been put onto a weigh bridge and they have to you have to you're not allowed to drive off unless you either get rid of the weight and literally you're leaving stuff on the side of the road which god knows what happens to it or what they do with it but that's what they make you do so you have to take stuff off the van until you are under three and a half tons again um, and I believe there's a fine associated with that as well. The other thing to think about when you are considering what kind of van you want is what you wear you want to stay. So if you want to live in your van for months or years on end and you want to be able to stealth camp in the middle of a city so you can go and, I don't know, use the showers or go to work even. I know a lot of people who live in their vans and go off to work. If you want to stay in places where a motorhome wouldn't be normally allowed to stay, you have to go for a van. And if you want to go wild camping or, um, you know, go off for days on end without going anywhere near a campsite, you need something that's got bigger tanks, bigger waste tank, bigger water tank. So a motorhome is probably better for something like that because you've got bigger storage. And again, if you're going to go off and do these amazing adventures down to Greece or Italy or even further, you probably want something that's got more storage on board. So that's definitely something to think about whilst you are planning the sort of vehicle that you want to get. And that was definitely one of the things that swayed us for our second van. Because again, I was all like, let's get a camper, especially as Jade's getting a bit older. And she's like, I don't really want to come with you anymore. You're not cool. Like, we know. Um, but we couldn't have a camper now. We love the space and we love the amount of storage that we are allowed to carry with us. Another thing to think about is do you want to tow? Because, and I didn't realise this, but not every van or motorhome can actually tow everything. Obviously within reason, but so there are certain motorhomes which don't have, and oh my goodness me, I am so untechnical at this, it's not true, but I will try and explain it in my limited ability. There is some form of support or strut or bar or something that goes along the back that the tow bar is used for the towing of the tow bar and the support and the structure and I'm sure there's a technical name and I can't remember it. I'm not even sure I knew it to be fair but if you want to tow like we tow the trailer with the two motorbikes on you've got to buy a van that's got that extra support so that they can use it for the tow bar um, and I know several motorhomes don't. Now, I don't know if you have a motorhome that doesn't have that, if they can retrofit it. I am, I, sh I am clearly not an expert in the matters of tow bars and struts or whatever the heck the technical term is. But I do know something to bear in mind. Um, so maybe find out the answer to that from someone who's a bit more technically minded. Right. Another random question I have been asked is what is the best time of year to buy a motorhome and the short answer is I've got absolutely no idea I know that in October certainly around the NEC show in October lots of new motorhomes come out and lots of manufacturers bring out their model for the following year so I assume when a new motorhome comes out other motorhomes in that range will decrease in price slightly so maybe the end of the year and also as always after summer because they are mainly summer leisure vehicles. After summer, I assume that the price goes down slightly because people don't wanna to have to pay to store them over winter or people have realized they didn't really use them over the summer and that they're a lot of money to keep. So with my very unlimited experience, I'm doing well here, aren't I? I'm just basically blabbing about things that I have no idea about, but I'm giving you my opinion, take it as you will. I assume that the best time of year to buy a motorhome is probably the back end of the year. However, buy one whenever's right for you. Don't buy one at the end of October if you've got no plans on using it for months and months and months on end. Unless you want to do some work to it, obviously, and do it up and check that everything's fine. But otherwise, you're paying for the insurance and storage if you need it and all the other costs that come with having an extra vehicle or if you don't really need one. So, yeah, buy it at the time that's best for you. 
another couple of things that we have been asked over the last couple of months are end bed or end lounge. Um, obviously this is entirely personal preference. You know that we really love our end lounge and it is amazing. However, if, oh, if you could only have the end lounge and the end lounge had to make up to a bed every night, I don't know because I hate making up the bed every night. I know it's ridiculous and it takes like five minutes, but then you have to store all your stuff and put it all down. And we've never had to do that because obviously our bed goes up into the... I'm, I'm looking at it now, like you can see it. If you want to know what our van looks like, I'll link to our van tour below and our bed goes up into the, the ceiling above our dinette area, which is brilliant. We get the best of both worlds. If I could only choose, I'd probably still choose the end lounge because I know how much we missed having somewhere to sit and watch telly or we don't have a tv on the board on board on board it's like a boat we don't have a tv with us but we do have um, a laptop and we do watch netflix on now tv now game of thrones is back on and yeah you know, once a week we'll sit down and have a bit of a telly fest but it's nice being able to stretch out and read a book or even now i'm sitting here and working on the blog and it's just nice being able to have the space. So yeah, I think from my point of view, an end lounge is more useful for us, but that's our personal thing. Um, a lot of people I know love their bed and having a proper bedroom. So yeah, that's definitely personal preference. End washroom or end bedroom or end lounge. Now again, this is personal preference. The big compromise we made on this motorhome, the one we've got now, is our bathroom is tiny, like tiny. And it's got the wheel arch in it and it's all in a weird place and you're sitting on the loo at a sort of an angle and you're sort of showering over the sink. And we knew that when we bought it, we knew that was a compromise. And so for me, unless you spend hours every day in the bathroom, which some people do and that's fine, live and let live, but for me, if you have an end washroom, yes, you get some amazing space and oh, it must be so lovely to be able to have a shower, then step out and be able to get dressed and it's all there because we can't do that because we've got a wet room. So you have to cut, literally come out into the lounge, make sure all the windows and all the curtains are shut and everything. So that's a bit frustrating. So it must be really nice to have that space in your bathroom. But then after that, I don't know, half hour maybe, you don't really use that space apart from to go to the bathroom. So that whole space is lost and you've lost all those windows and the light. And again, I really don't want to offend anyone who's got an end washroom. This is just my opinion, but it's something to think about. If that's an absolute, I love it and I really want it, awesome. But if you would rather have space to sit or space to sleep, then don't look at layouts that don't have that. And I would definitely recommend going around and looking at as many different layouts on motorhomes you can. Leave your wallet at home, for goodness sake, don't do what we did and buy the first one that fit. Although it had a really nice feel, you watching and you're like, oh, this is lovely, but it just wasn't the right way to buy a motorhome at all. But the more layouts you actually go into and look out, the more that you can then get a feel for what works for you. Imagine living in the space, imagine like all the family there, where would everyone sit, where would everyone play, where would everyone relax how would it work if you were actually stuck in two three days when it was throwing it down you couldn't sit outside and how would everyone interact with each other because that's what we didn't do on our first van that was a really big mistake because we didn't know any better so i think i've covered everything I probably not covered everything, but I'm sure if I think of anything else, I'll add it in below. If you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. I really appreciate it. And please do, if you haven't already, come to the blog, wandering-bird.com. I'll link to it below. And you can join up to our mailing list and we send different subscriber offers and information about what we're doing and various other things that are going on and details about where we've been and what have you and you can also then reply and send me an email asking me some questions and I will do my best to answer them I answer every single email personally and a lot of the questions really help let me know what you guys are struggling with so if you have got questions that you'd like answered come over to the blog join up to the mailing list and send me an email I will send out another video next week hopefully we will be travelling back to the UK, although when the time this goes out, I'll probably be back in the UK. So I hope you all are enjoying the sunny, nice weather and I will speak to you soon.
safe travels. Take care. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. And it's a good time. We're chasing every